Thank you for being here. So I'm a clinical and holistic nutritionist, and I have been for the last 10 years, and I really believe in using food as your medicine whenever possible, which we're going to talk about today. And I also believe in finding the root of a health issue and healing it from there instead of addressing individual symptoms. So we're going to talk about some really cool, cutting-edge stuff today. Five steps to gut healing, but I, I listed on here a new level of cellular healing because this is a way to really change your genetics and reboot your health. It applies to every single one of you, no matter what your current state of health is, and I hope you take the information and help your friends and family with it. So, how many of you guys know who Hippocrates is? Have you all heard of him? He's an awesome guy, right? 3,000 years ago, he said, all disease begins in the gut. And now, that's an idea that time has come back. It's come around. And so, as a clinician, I always look at gut health first, no matter what. If our guts aren't functioning, if our digestive system isn't functioning well, nothing else will. Not our hormones, not our thyroid, not our immune system, not our brain. All disease begins in the gut. And so what we're going to talk about today is really how do, we, how do we improve the gut so that we have the power to turn off genes for future disease and dysfunction so that we can live a healthy, happy life and that you have the power and control over your health as life moves forward. I see a ton of people with digestive issues. And in America, we have over 64 million people struggling with a lot of obvious symptoms of digestive health, you know, bloating and constipation. And how many of you guys know people that live with stomach pain day in, day out? They don't know what they can eat. And so, but there's so many, there's so many symptoms that people don't think are connected to the gut that they're dealing with every day, like headaches and exhaustion. We're going to talk a little bit about adrenal fatigue, the adrenals of the gas tank of the body, and joint and muscle pain. Really big ones are skin disorders, like eczema and psoriasis or acne. A lot of people still don't draw that parallel that that begins in the gut. And insomnia, you know, working with people, that's probably the third biggest symptom that I work with. And when we can heal the gut, then we can really start to get the sleeping under control. Same thing with our mental emotional state. So what I want to do if I do my job right in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to shift your belief system a little bit to make it a little bit more comprehensive. So we think about disease, right? I mean, you've all heard of these diseases, Crohn's, colitis, Hashimoto's. Have you all heard of these diseases? Eczema, psoriasis. And so what happens is we get focused on the disease state, and we can't necessarily move forward. And so, if you start to look, if you have a disease, there's an underlying cause for that. Most people think, and that's why I do what I do, is to help free people from their health issues so they don't think that they get a diagnosis and they have to deal with that for the rest of their lives and just keep marching and managing it. I have seen, and I have recently taken 2,000 people from around the world through the process I'm going to take you through to today, that a lot of these things are reversible. And that's really powerful. So... But then we also have, in the natural world, we talk about, in the natural medicine world, we talk a lot about the bugs. So as a nutritionist, I might run stool tests or blood tests, and we come up and we find bad bugs, bad bacteria. Have you heard of, has anybody heard of H. pylori? Candida, right, when you have yeast or fungal overgrowth, protozoa, sometimes we travel to another country, it doesn't have to be another country, and we get, we get some sort of a bug, and we never really felt right since. Um, lots of different viruses. So what we're going to talk about today is instead of approaching the disease, instead of approaching the bug, we're going to talk about all of it. So we're going to talk about the microbiome. Who's heard of the microbiome? Well, it's like more than half the room. I love it. Okay, so it's all about the microbiome. The new model for cellular healing is about addressing the collective genetic code of the gut. So all the different microorganisms that are in our gut, we look at all of those. And all of you guys sitting here with me right now, you all have within your gut. You have bacteria, you have fungus, you have yeast, you have protozoa. Really, we are more 
we are more microbial than we are human. So we have 10 times the amount of microbial cells than we have human cells. So that stands to reason that we are bacteria learning how to be human. And that's why this is really so important, because if we can create that covenant with the microorganisms that are living in and on our body at any given point in time, well, that's kind of as, as close as we get to being superheroes or superhuman. And so this is really powerful. So now you think, I just told you about the gut microbiome with all the guys in there, right? But we have seven different microbiomes in the human body. On your skin, right? You have your skin microbiome. You have in the nose and the sinuses. You have a microbiome in your mouth, anywhere where there's bacteria, and it goes all the way from the lungs to the intestines to the genitals. So what we're going to talk about today is healing the gut microbiome and then training your amazing supercomputer, your body, to understand the process it went through so it can replicate that genetic code to the other six microbiomes. So, you following me with that? So here's when I say all disease begins in the gut. That's why when you can heal the gut, chronic skin issues like eczema and psoriasis go away. That's why when you heal the gut, chronic sinus infections can go away. When you heal the gut, chronic yeast infections can go away. Whatever your genetic weak link is, if you say, oh, I always get bronchitis every time I get sick, my lungs are my weak spot, this is a way to tune up the health of your whole body. It's like when you get a new computer and you have a new operating system, and you're like, I can't believe how fast everything works. This is awesome. So that's the idea that we're going to talk about, that we are talking about. In order to do it, you have to understand. So we're going to relate the microbiome to like a community. And so you have to understand the bacteria. And this is a way through understanding them and working with them instead of against them that we can overcome a major problem that we have, which is antibiotic resistance. Have you heard that antibiotics, they're not working the way that they used to. We have to take more. We have to take them stronger because we haven't really taken the time to understand the bugs so that what we can do is actually actually work with them instead of against them. So we don't keep creating these superbugs, which could get really scary. So understanding these three organisms, we have good, bad, and neutral. Nobody talks about the neutral ones. So good organisms, they're symbiotic. So just like a pillar of the community, they're going to contribute to long-standing good digestive health. They're going to, in the community, help build the roads and look out for others. And we want to have 85 to 90 percent good. How many of you think you have that? <laughs> Maybe you will after you learn this. OK, then we have pathogenic microorganisms. You think of the idea of pathology, that's the study of disease, right? And so if we can understand them, we can really cut down on diseases. And so those are bad bacteria. However, we need them. We need about 10 to 15% bad bacteria so that our immune system stays on alert and stays strong and knows how to protect us. It's when that balance goes to 25, 30, 50, 80 percent bad that we start to get really sick. Then we have the neutral guys. Has anybody ever heard of commensal bacteria? Yeah, I love it. OK, good. So then we have this neutral type of bacteria. And so they're not necessarily good. They're not bad. I call them, they're like impressionable teenagers. They're going to take the path of you know, whoever they're influenced by. So you really want to make sure that you influence the good guys are the ones influencing them so that they can then contribute to good digestive health because they're taking up space, right? Nothing is really good or bad. If it's there and it's taking up space, it should contribute, just like all of us in a society. So when we have this good combination, the right combination of good guys and bad guys, we convert the neutral guys, then we have a highly intelligent and highly skilled immune system. I have watched people be turning off disease and reversing disease because they have rejuvenated their microbiome. And so like a community, if you do it right, like I said, it's like having the best civil engineer in the world because it can replicate it in those other six microbiomes that I just told you about. OK, so this is a way that we can live up to our genetic potential. It's just so powerful 
You know, I was actually telling Nicole before we started this that I was getting ready to go into peace and conflict resolution. I wanted to be a diplomat before becoming a nutritionist over 10 years ago because I wanted to contribute to peace. And then I realized that when you have harmony between the human world and the microbial world, you create peace within the individual, that's a way to create peace within the world. And that's why when you have this type of harmony, then you notice your mental emotional state really starts to change in super dramatic ways. So how do we do this, right? We're going to talk about a five-step strategy to gut healing. We're going to go through diet. First and foremost, you have to slash inflammation. Then we have to purge pathogens. Then we have to add back the good guys. So if this was a garden, right, we have to pull the weeds before we plant the seeds. It's really important. You can't just throw some probiotics down the chute and think you're contributing anything to lasting digestive health. We have to take care of leaky gut. I have a feeling a lot of you guys have heard of what leaky gut is in this room or intestinal permeability. And we have to optimize stomach acid. I'm going to tell you about something called terraforming as we go through. And when you go through these four steps, then you can handle many more foods that many people couldn't have handled before. So how do we maintain this once we do it? So the five steps, the first one, super important, we have to take the fuel off the fire. So we have to slash inflammation, which we know is a silent killer. And so we have to get rid of common food sensitivities, which would be gluten, corn, soy, dairy, eggs. Those are the five most common food sensitivities. What we do is we identify the inflammation set point. And that's why I put this picture up here. We basically need to take a vacuum cleaner and really start to get rid of that inflammation so that we, can, we, we set the stage to be able to plant the seeds, to be able to purge the pathogens. And so we give a break. We use enzymes very strategically to give the digestive organs a break because they've been working so hard and they work hard for you every day and every time that you eat. So we go and we clean up old molecules of inflammation with enzymes. We use enzymes to help you digest better. And then we also use enzymes to take care of something called biofilms. How many of you have heard of biofilms? Okay, so biofilms, if you think of all those little bad guys that I just told you about, from bacteria to yeast to viruses, we now understand that they have the ability to colonize, just like anything else. And so what happens is they colonize and they protect themselves with something called a biofilm. It's a little fort that they live inside of, and you can have many of them living there together. And that's why we've developed antibiotic resistance, because it's almost like a bulletproof vest, and they get to stay protected and safe. So we use what's called a hydrolytic enzyme. That just means water. Hydro means water. And we start to break apart their chemical bonds, and we get rid of that protective fort so that by the time we move into the pathogen purge, we're ready to get them out of the body. Do you follow me with that? OK. So we stop feeding them. Before you get rid of pathogens, you have to stop feeding them. And so I know that you guys know this, and you're here at Wanderlust, and so many people are interested in health, but we get rid of things like sugar and processed foods, the refined carbohydrates, the things that thin the lining of the gut, overconsumption of alcohol and caffeine. I am a huge proponent of getting rid of genetically modified foods out of the body. If there's you know, corn and soy and canola, we get an abundance of this when we eat out because they're the most expensive, uh, least expensive, excuse me, oils to cook with. So you have to start to really clean up the diet, get rid of the inflammation, and use enzymes to speed up everything within the body. And it's good to look at your food sensitivities. Does anybody know if they have food sensitivities? Just a couple people. Yeah, so food can be our medicine or our slowest form of poison. And in order to help the body, we want to get rid of our food sensitivities and really just eat real food. It's not like I'm saying you need to live on wheatgrass and twigs. It's just to really eat real food. 
And then we have set the stage to purge these pathogens. And like I said, we all have at least two, three, four, or more of these at any given time in our system that could be out of balance. So this is like my favorite slide of the whole presentation because it really gets into the science. And so you can start to pull it together here to see, oh, have I ever had toenail fungus? Or have I ever had chicken pox? Have I ever had you know, any type of um, Montezuma's revenge? And then you can still kind of really start to connect that maybe that might still be harming your health in some way. So you have to come up with another way. We have a traditional way where we use antibiotics, we use antifungals, we use antivirals and immunosuppressants, and that's fine. They've saved a ton of lives, and we will continue to need them, but not all the time, not as a general approach, right? We have to come up with an integrative approach. Thinking back to that whole idea of peace, if you look at the microbiome, if we think about a war analogy, it's kind of like open warfare in the microbiome. And so if you're going to use antibiotics, or even in the natural medicine way, high doses of anti-botanicals, anti if you're going to use a high dose, you're just going to go try to kill, just like war when you use bombs, it kills innocent people and it destroys the land. And that's the same thing that happens here, is we also kill our good bacteria, we also create tiny little microscopic holes in the small intestine called leaky gut. So then we have to do cleanup work. There's the wrath that they left in their wake, and in a lot of ways they're being used as a Band-Aid approach. So what we do is a totally new, harmless way to rid the body from pathogens. We try to understand them. Just like if you understand another human, you have a much better relationship with them, right? So we understand now that bacteria, only in the last 10 or 15 years did science really start to know that bacteria can talk with the most sophisticated cell phone technology ever. Imagine if you called me on my cell phone and I didn't have to answer the phone, I just looked and I saw your name, I knew everything you wanted to tell me and everything you felt about it. That's how sophisticated, that's how much more sophisticated they are than we, you know, in terms of the way that they talk. So when we can understand, it's called quorum sensing, instead of attacking them, what we do is we go in and we clip the cell phone wires, right? We, we, we don't allow them to communicate anymore, so they can't replicate and share their genetic code. This is a much gentler way to do it. You see, like, I've got these pathogens, this picture here. What you want to do is you want to make them leave on their own. Just like, you know, if you turned off the lights at a party, you got rid of all the refreshments, it's time to go. So that's the idea. And then you have less, less things to deal with. So I could stand up here and I could talk about this all day long, um, but I just wanted to give you a couple, maybe you take a picture of the screen without going into all of those, because people say, how do you interrupt quorum sensing? How do you do this in a gentle way? Well, we use very low dose, high quality combination of botanicals so that they can all work together to interrupt the way that the pathogens communicate to do the least amount of harm possible. And we're taking care of the other digestive organs throughout this process the pancreas, the liver, it's really important. Okay, so a wonderful clinician who's been a mentor to me, he always says, if you build it, they will come. He loves the movie, The Field of Dreams. And so now we have removed the weeds, right? In step two, it's time to plant the seeds. If you plant seeds in barren soil, you're not gonna grow flowers, right? So this is what we're doing, and only then do we start to use probiotics. That's why it's really important when you use probiotics. So this is this, this is the coolest genetic part. Based upon where you're originally from, whether it be Asia, Africa, Europe, you have about three to 500 strains of probiotics native to where you're originally from. You can't find those in the health food store. You can't take all those strains. So what we need to do is teach your body how to make those strains. 
So we've gotten rid of the bad bacteria, and then we, we add new good strains of probiotics, but only a certain handful, only about 13 different strains. These are the three, and each of them have three to four different types. So if you take probiotics, you want to make sure that you have these three types of bacteria in there. And then we use them like a starter log. So it kind of starts to catch, right? And now you're training and informing your immune system instead of giving it to them. I'm a big proponent of uh, teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime, versus give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. So we give the body what it needs, so then it can take whatever it wants and make the right bacteria native to you. So you and I eat a meal, same exact meal, I make completely different bacteria out of that meal than you would make. That's the genetic component, it informs the immune system. So. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip going through <laughs> the different types of bacteria, but we can talk about it afterwards if you guys are really interested. And then we go through and we create a healthy intestinal lining. We heal the lining of the gut. It's called the mucosal lining. This is what's going to contribute to your brain health because you see anything that escapes the gut is going to go directly to the brain, and a lot of stuff shouldn't be escaping through the gut. This is when people really start to feel better. This is when people are really starting to reverse their skin issues. This is when people start to heal their thyroid antibodies, their rheumatoid arthritis. This is when I hear from my clients, like I said, we just took 2,000 people through this. We're in the middle of taking another 1,000 people through this process where, okay, you can take the crutches off. You know, if you're really sick, you're ready to start moving forward on your own. And, but it takes some time, right, before you can run again and before you reach that full potential. It could take three or four months. And it's really important in order to get there that you go through step number four, and you optimize hydrochloric acid. Whenever we eat meat, our body secretes hydrochloric acid to help us try to digest it, and many people are low in stomach acid, which is our first line of defense to protect us. That's why I have the gate there, is to keep the bad stuff out. So if you have any pathogens on your food, we make sure those pathogens don't stay in the body. And if you have low stomach acid, then you kind of don't have that fence there anymore. So we want to rebuild it to keep you safe for the future. And then we do something called terraforming, and that is creating sustainable and habitable life. The idea is maybe you've heard of it from Star Trek. What we want to do now is create self-sufficiency in the human being, and that takes three to six months. So the seeds have been planted. We want to see flowers grow. And so that's what we do with this idea called terraforming, where we're giving things like fermented foods so that you keep getting those probiotics on a daily basis and then also good fibers that's going to feed that good bacteria gut bacteria that creates a self-sufficient digestive system. So, and that's going to keep going to help you train your body and help you keep attracting those extra strains of bacteria that you need to keep you healthy. Here's where the new operating system comes in. Here's where metabolic syndrome starts to get reversed. This is true weight loss. This is true really balancing the blood sugar, the things that really make a change. And you can do it at any age. Uh, a lot of people say, am I too old to do this? No. We, we all, just like we changed the oil in our car, we all have to take care of our digestive health so that we can move to step five, which is really living in 80-20 balance and enjoying your food, not being afraid to eat certain foods, which many of us are, right? Especially people who have been sick for a long time. They don't know what they can eat without feeling bad. So this is the idea of reaching your genetic potential because you have no idea how powerful your body is and it's hardwired to adapt and survive. And this is a training ground for that. So that's the idea of we have no idea how good our bodies are designed to feel. And I hope that I drove that point home and I'm sure you may have some questions about it. Thank you guys for listening, and I hope you got those five steps. What do you think is the main cause for the decline in gut health worldwide right now? And I've spent years really looking at this subject myself. 